Have you ever been told it's just a game? Have you ever been accused of acting like a psycho while watching Kentucky play? Or do you feel bad that you let a game dictate your emotions? Well, this video is basically a PSA to say, as long as you aren't hurting anyone, it's okay to be emotional over a game. Be grateful there's something in your life that you care about this much. But why do we care so much? If our team wins, no one gives us a promotion and a raise. We don't get extra years added onto our life. If we lose, it should be fine. So to people who aren't in it like we are, it might seem kind of crazy. I feel bad for people who don't understand that no matter what problems you're having in your life, for a couple of hours, the only thing that matters is a game. But whether you're so excited that you're driving people nuts or you're so sad that people want to help, someone is likely going to tell you it's just a game. And they would be wrong. But what, it's only a game? Don't say that! Please! That is the worst the stupid thing anyone could say. But it quite clearly isn't only a game. I mean, if it was, do you honestly think I'd care this much? 18 years! 18 years! Do you know what you wanted 18 years ago? Or 10? Or 5? I would assume a lot of you watching this video have been a fan of your team for a long time. Maybe it wasn't even your choice to pull for them. And like a lot of Kentucky fans, I was indoctrinated at an early age. I mean, when I first met my dad, he was literally wearing a Kentucky shirt. Ever since I was a child, I was being educated about legends who came before me, and I became well-versed in Kentucky basketball's history and tradition. The earliest memory I have of ever praying for something on my own happened at halftime of the 98 championship game. I was eight years old, and I guess up until that point, nothing mattered enough to ask for divine intervention. My interests have changed a lot since then. People in my life have come and gone. Amongst all the changes in my life, there has at least been one constant. I am a Kentucky Wildcat fan. It's something people notice about me usually right away. It's closer to a religion than it is a hobby. To try to trivialize what this is by saying it's just a game ignores the fact that to love something passionately like this is what makes life worth living. And the human race is filled with passion. Medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. Romance, love, and Kentucky winning championships. These are what we stay alive for. Let me tell you a quick story about March 31st, 2019. That was the day I knew I needed help. Professional help. I had spent the day walking my pit mix blue through a forest with limited cell reception. I didn't want to contact anyone and I didn't want anyone contacting me. 400 or so miles from there, Kentucky was playing Auburn in the regional final. Now, I should tell you, I actually thought they were going to win this game. Like, I was confident. I just didn't want to watch it and go through all the ups and downs. And I'm sure in that arena, there were people even enjoying themselves watching the game. You know, the casual fans. Diehard fans go on a hike with their dog to avoid the emotional roller coaster that is actually watching the game. Now, I didn't bet on this game, and other than in my imagination as a kid, I did not play for the University of Kentucky. I didn't even go to school there. I went to Murray State, where Dr. Daniel Wan teaches a class on the psychology of sports fans, and he also authored this book. It's amazing the affective impact that you get through sports. Even though we're not the ones playing, we're not the ones coaching, we're not the ones doing, it's still such a part of who we are. It matters so much to us that we have these very intense emotional reactions. Plugging it here with disposition theory. If I care a lot about this team, I have a disposition, a connection, an identification with this team. If that team wins, the world is wonderful. If that team loses, the world's terrible. When teams lose, individuals are so depressed and sad, they do not perform nearly as well at work. Their job performance goes statistically significantly down and they earn less. These are pretty powerful effects above and beyond Wow, Murray State won a basketball game. And despite feeling sad about losses, his studies show that being a highly identifiable sports fan enhances our lives. But at the end of that day of 2019, I was hurting. So on March 31st, 2019, I had to ask myself some hard questions. Like, how could a game I didn't watch hurt me like this? And what's the point of being a fan if watching the game stresses me out so much to the point that I'd just rather not watch? I mean, is liking a sports team supposed to be a sadistic hobby? Also, I was 29 when that game happened. There were several players who were 18 years old that logged a lot of minutes in that game. Am I really going to let the success and failures of teenagers that I don't know have a profound effect on my overall happiness? Yeah, I am. 
And despite going to therapy for this very thing, I still do. But I learned something in therapy. A loss, or more specifically, a tournament loss, is just a part of the story. Winning a title every year would make winning a title not feel as special. Every year they don't win it makes the year they eventually do even more of a celebration. But even knowing that, this kind of heartbreak is just unfixable. It's not analogous to a breakup where you found out later that you both just weren't right for each other. No, in this case, you were perfect for each other and she died. Fine, let's liken it to another form of entertainment. Let's say that you went to see your favorite musician and you left that concert feeling gutted and heartbroken. Well, then you would not go to any more Carly Rae Jepsen shows. But when our favorite teams lose and actually do give us that feeling, we may say, well, I'm not watching them anymore, but we know we'll be right back the next game ready to get hurt again. And we do that because winning big games feels amazing. It's a drug, or at least does what a drug does. Dopamine, serotonin levels rise, testosterone levels rise when your teams win. As a diehard sports fan, we're basically addicts to this drug. But since most years end with our teams losing, all we're really doing is signing up for heartbreak every single year. We're left chasing that high of winning. And this might seem dramatic, but only because it's irrational. And I know that it's irrational. But the joy and the pain that I feel is real. Doctors will recommend patients with heart disease avoid watching the games because it matters so much to some of us that it will kill us. I mean, if it's only a game, then how come my overall outlook on my life changes when a kid from Modesto, California hits a shot while wearing the logo that I choose to root for? I mean, I guess technically it's true. It's only a game being played by some teenagers that we don't really know. It only unites us with people who may have nothing in common with us except they're wearing the same shade of blue. It only makes us feel like we're a part of something bigger than us. It only makes us feel true, raw emotion and provide an avenue to express it. It only gives us some of life's greatest moments, experience with friends and family. It only makes us feel euphoria or pain like no other form of entertainment. If pulling for a winning team makes me better understand and accept my own mortality, then how can we say it's just a game? I mean, okay, fine, fine. It's only a game. It's only a ball going into a peach basket. It's only a game. And it only means everything. <laughs>